Hi everyone, welcome to lesson three, week five for our reading comprehension unit on Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. I hope you're enjoying the story so far. Today I'm going to read to you uh, chapter three and then also discuss some of the comprehension questions. Okay, let's get started. So lesson three, chapter three, Sadako's Secret. Chapter three, Sadako's Secret. It was the beginning of autumn when Sadako rushed home with the good news. She kicked off her shoes and threw open the door with a bang. I'm home, she called. Her mother was fixing supper in the kitchen. The most wonderful thing has happened, Sadako said breathlessly. Guess what? Many wonderful things happened to you, Sadako-chan. I can't even guess. The big race on field day, Sadako said. I've been chosen from bamboo class to be on the relay team. She danced around the room, gaily swinging her school bag. Just think. If we win, I'll be sure to get on the team in the junior high school next year. That was what Sadako wanted more than anything else. At supper, Mr. Sasaki made a long speech about family honour and pride. Even Masahiro was impressed. Sadako was too excited to eat. She just sat there, grinning happily. From then on, Sadako thought of only one thing, the relay race. She practised every day at school and often ran all the way home. When Masahiro timed her with Mr. Sasaki's big watch, Sadako's speed surprised everybody. Maybe, she dreamed, I will be the best runner in the whole school. At last, the big day arrived. A crowd of parents, relatives and friends gathered at the school to watch the sports events. Sadako was so nervous, she was afraid her legs wouldn't work at all. Members of the other teams suddenly looked taller and stronger than her teammates. When Sadako told her mother how she felt, Mrs. Sasaki said, Sadako-chan, it is natural to be a little bit afraid, but don't worry, when you get out there, you will run as fast as you can. Then it was time for the relay race. Just do your best, Mrs. Sasaki said, giving Sadako's hand a squeeze. We'll be proud of you. The kind words from her parents made the knot in Sadako's stomach loosen. They love me, no matter what, she thought. At the signal to start, Sadako forgot everything but the race. When it was her turn, she ran with all the strength she had. Sadako's heart was still thumping painfully against her ribs when the race was over. It was then that she first felt strange and dizzy. She scarcely heard someone cry, Your team won! The bamboo class surrounded Sadako, cheering and shouting. She shook her head a few times and the dizziness went away. All winter, Sadako tried to improve her running speed. To qualify for the racing team in junior high, she would have to practice every day. Sometimes, after a long run, the dizziness returned. Sadako decided not to tell her family about it. She tried to convince herself that it meant nothing, that the dizziness would go away. But it didn't. It got worse. Frightened, Sadako carried the secret inside of her. She didn't even tell Chizoko, her best friend. On New Year's Eve, Sadako hoped she could magically wish away the dizzy spells. How perfect everything would be if she didn't have this secret! At midnight, she was in her cosy bed quilts when the temple bells began to chime. They were ringing out all the evils of the old year so that the new one would have a fine beginning. With each ring, Sadako drowsily made her special wish. The next morning, the Sasaki family joined crowds of people as they visited their shrines. Mrs. Sasaki looked beautiful in her best flowered silk kimono. As soon as you can afford it, I'll buy a kimono for you, she promised Sadako. A girl your age should have one. Sadako thanked her mother politely, but she didn't care about a kimono. She only cared about racing with the team in junior high. Amidst throngs of happy people, Sadako forgot her secret for a while. She let the bright joy of the season wash her worries away. At the end of the day, she raced Masahiro home and won easily. Above the door were the good luck symbols Mrs. Sasaki had put there to protect them during the new year. With a beginning like this, how could anything bad happen? So that was chapter three, Sadako's Secret. 
and we're learning a little bit more about our main character, Sadako Sasaki. So first we're introduced to her. She's this happy, energetic girl. She's in primary school. Um, she seems quite superstitious, so she's always looking out for good luck signs and observing different traditions and customs to uh, make sure she gets good luck. Um, but she's also having these dizzy spells as well, and she's having to keep it a secret from her parents. Um, so she's chosen to do that. Um, now in the story, there's a few things that happen in the story that are quite specific to Japan. So the first one is around uh, New Year's in, well, I put New Year's in Hiroshima here, but it's also New Year's in Japan, which happens at the same time as New Year in Australia, so on the 1st of January. And in Japan, it's customary for people to visit a shrine. So on the left-hand side, you'll see these people visiting this building here um, with the flags out the front. Now, I'm not too sure whether this is a Shinto shrine or a Buddhist shrine. Um, Shinto is the uh, national religion of Japan, um, but also there's a large uh, a Buddhist population. So a lot of people follow Buddhism. Sometimes people follow both of them as well. Um, and one of the traditions or customs um, in those religions is to visit a shrine, which is kind of like a temple. Um, at the beginning of the year and to wish for good luck. So shrines actually in the Shinto religion um, are home to what are called kami, which are like spirits um, or kind of uh, supernatural sort of um, energy um, that people visit there and they make a wish for good luck in the year. So you can see these people here are all crowded up and it's all very orderly. Um, there's a really popular uh, temple in um, Tokyo in Asakusa um, which is like you know hundreds of thousands of people visit there each year at, um, on the first to make a wish kind of it's kind of like a new year's resolution but it's also wishing for good luck as well also another thing that's quite specific to Japan which is mentioned in this story is a kimono so you might have heard of one of these before it's a traditional uh, dress now it's actually not just for women, there are men's kimono as well. Um, so on the right hand side, the gentleman is wearing kind of like a black um, or gray um, version of a men's kimono. Um, and actually the word kimono in Japanese, it just means a thing you wear. Um, but it's a traditional um, uh, gown or dress and it's actually quite difficult to put on. Um, and Sadako's mother is talking about um, buying a kimono for Sadako now that she's growing up a little bit. So she says a girl your age should have a kimono. Um, now people don't actually wear these um, when they're just walking around the street. They're more saved for sort of special occasions. I think um, in the story said in the 50s, probably more people wore them. Um, but by that time, a lot of people were wearing kind of Western clothes, but definitely in the past, let's say maybe a hundred years ago, um, people would sort of wear these more on an everyday basis, but now they're more ceremonial or for special occasions. So here um, on the right-hand side, this couple, um, they're visiting a shrine. Um, and I, I suspect it's somewhere that's quite important or a special sort of occasion. Maybe they're tourists or maybe they're, um, they might be on sort of a wedding or some sort of um, special occasion. Now, um, this kind of gets to the next point, which is around our Super 6 strategy of uh, monitoring, um, making sure we're understanding the different words. So there are some words in here that are specific um, or have specific meanings. Um, what I'd like you to do is to match up these words here in the word bank with the definition. Um, things like shrine, which I've just mentioned, doesn't actually have kimono there, but um, match them up because these words are sort of appearing quite frequently or they are quite pivotal, pivotal or important to the last three chapters that we've read. And they'll, some of them will be uh, important going forward as well. And lastly, here are your comprehension questions for today. Um, now I've put some inferential questions in here. So remembering that an inference is where you have some facts and then you have your own background knowledge and you combine those two things to get what's called an inference. So it's kind of like a conclusion. So it's sort of what a detective does. A detective looks at clues or um, hints then they also think logically about those and put them together to form an inference. Um, so Sadako started getting dizzy. Why did she keep this a secret from her family and friends? Think about 
what you know of her personality. Yeah. So what kind of person is um, Sadako? Why might she be keeping this from her friends and family? Is she a sneaky person? Is she a generous person? Is she a, uh, a proudful person? Um, you might want to look back in the text or sort of um, think about what you know about Sadako so far to answer that question. Question two, Mrs. Sasaki told Sadako, I'll buy a kimono for you. A girl your age should have one. What does this mean? So we know what a kimono is, um, but what does she mean a girl your age should have one? Uh, and how is that related to a kimono? Uh, question three, Sadako makes a special visit at New Year's. In Japan, it's customary for people to wish for good fortune at the beginning of the year. How do you celebrate New Year in your family? Now, this could be uh, New Year on the 1st of January. It could be Lunar New Year. It could be Arabic New Year. It could be another type of New Year um, that's important in your family or in your uh, culture. Um, and describe how you celebrate it. So some of the things you do. So do you visit somewhere special? Do you have a special feast? Do you wear special clothes? Um, this is kind of relating to our uh, connecting to text. So um, when we are uh, reading, we are also sort of making connections with our own knowledge and our own experience. Um, so think about things that you do at New Year's. And lastly, Sadako puts a lot of faith in good luck signs and traditions. The chapter ends with a rhetorical question. With a good beginning like this, how could anything bad happen? So what do you think the purpose of this sentence is? So why do you think uh, this uh, chapter ends with this rhetorical question? Um, what kind of effect does this rhetorical question have? With a good beginning like this, how could anything bad happen? What might that suggest to us? And as always, don't forget to fill in your Super 6 template. In the next lesson, I'll show you an example of sort of how I filled it in. So hopefully you guys are filling in it as you go. Um, but going forward, I'll kind of do a few check-ins on that as well so you can sort of see how I'm going and filling in the Super 6 template. All right, hope you're enjoying the book and I'll see you in lesson four.